Digital Darwinism. Is your business able to pivot? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Tom Goodwin. He's Executive Vice President and Head of Innovation for Zenith USA, an author of Digital Darwinism. Welcome, Tom. Hello, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. What is the, so what does Zenith do, for, first of all? Uh, we invest our clients' uh, money in media, basically. We're a, a kind of a classic media agency. Our job is to try and ensure that our brands that we represent are able to connect with consumers in the best way. So everyone from Verizon to Chase to Coles uh, to people like Sonic Burgers, uh, we help them connect with consumers. And what does the head of innovation do? What kind of title is that? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, broadly speaking, the world is going through a lot of change. Uh, technology is leading to massive uh, changes in people's behaviors. It's making new things possible. Uh, but within this landscape of chaos, um, there is a degree to which our clients need understanding about what matters and what doesn't matter. Uh, so it's my job to try and understand what this technology means for their business, what it means for their business problems, what it means for their consumers, what it means for the ways that they can connect with people, um, and then to try and do something about it. So whether it's the rise of voice, whether it's the opportunities that chatbots give companies, um, it's my job to sort of challenge their thinking and get them to do more interesting and innovative stuff that makes a difference. That said, you're always at the center of debate related to things like digital marketing and digital transformation. You, you post all over social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you're always getting us to think. So, you know, and, and the fact that we use these terms all the time and then that they're a bit overused. So yeah. the new book, I'm, uh, you know, is a little bit of a carryover on that thought, digital, <laughs> digital Darwinism. And yeah. it just hit the shelves. Talk about the book or the thesis of the book. I mean, it's designed to get people to think. Um, it's quite easy to make a career going around saying that everything is different. Um, it's quite easy to proclaim that every technology is gonna change everything. I think the reality is the businesses do need to change, but they need to change in a slightly different way to the way that most people think. Um, you know, most companies today are the accumulation of lots of well-meaning decisions they've made over time, but they've kind of ended up in a place which is not ideal for today, and it's certainly not perfect for tomorrow. Um, so a lot of the book is getting companies to think, how would I construct my business if I started it today? How would I sort of leverage technology in more meaningful and deeper ways? Um, how would I create the entity that I need to create um, in order to really succeed in the future? A few years back, every business was calling themselves <laughs> the Airbnb of this, the Uber of that. Yes. Um, but today, are we really seeing anything new? I mean, the fascinating thing is that it, it's very tempting to say that everything is faster now than it's ever been before. And the reality is that most of the great shifts happened perhaps five to 10 years ago. You know, when the smartphones were developed, when 3G became 4G, that was a great time for new businesses to construct in that environment. That's what created, you know, the vast success with Uber, Facebook, Airbnb, Alibaba, Venmo, uh, even people like Snap. Um, that, that was an amazing time to create a new business. And I don't think that's the end of it. I think it's more that now as this technology matures, as people's behaviors mature, as people start to have more trust in entities they've never seen before, um, as the shareability of content allows everyone to create a new company, um, I think we're seeing a really, really interesting and an exciting time for new businesses to be created. What about 5G? Will that create the same change conditions? I think it's, it's a big question. I think um, the interesting thing about these new um, network capacities is they only make sense in retrospect. Like at the time when 3G arrived, no one really knew what to do with it. And in retrospect, it allowed people to share pictures and share videos. Um, similarly, you know, 4G's allowed people to sort of share videos much more quickly, consume more content. 5G will probably mean sort of ultra low latency, much more secure networks, um, the ability to have things like self-driving cars, um, even things like virtual reality on the go. Um, but it, it's likely that we misunderstand what it means until we've had it. When we've had it and actually we end up seeing that completely new consumer behavior has developed, we'll, we'll then realize that actually we didn't quite understand it at this moment in time. One of the things I find frustrating when I've worked, work, worked for really large corporations is they seem to lose the ability to pivot. So what's your recommendation to how businesses that are large and, and dominate an industry, if you will, how, they, how can they retain the ability that a startup would have? It's certainly not easy. I think if you were to look at the characteristics that have made businesses incredibly successful so far, it's actually those same characteristics which make them quite vulnerable to change. So it's having responsibilities, it's having assets, it's having employees. 
Um, until recently, I think the, the main way that people thought was that you could pivot. They, they assumed that if you created new teams, if you had a head of transformation, if you employed better software, that companies could change. Increasingly, I'm not sure that that's the case. I think most companies would be better off almost hedging their bets by both existing in the current paradigm, but also creating entities which will go on to carry the mantle in the future. So if you are a TV company, how can you create the next version of Snapchat? If you are um, a mobile operator, how can you become the mobile operator that becomes your future? And it probably involves having small teams of people that work quite separately to the mothership um, and tap into the resources and the expertise that are, are kind of unencumbered by the, the scale and, and perhaps some of the kind of processes that big companies use. You know, somebody who's well-respected in the industry, Clayton Christensen, who's a Harvard <laughs> Business School professor, a noted expert on disruptive innovation, you know, you actually disagree with him. You don't think his model explains some prominent disruption. So talk about that. I'm just aware that if you look at the main aspects of our lives that are now profoundly different and companies that have actually had groundbreaking success since the year 2000, uh, none of them can really be adequately, adequately explained by his theory. I think his theory worked great in the world of hardware, worked great in the world of B2B sales. But whether it's Airbnb, Uber, the iPhone, Tesla, Dyson, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, Venmo, pretty much every single success story has not been a result of this kind of lazy legacy industry and someone coming in and undercutting on price. It's actually been something much more straightforward, which is using the power of new technology to do something so profoundly different that it didn't need a marketing campaign to tell people it was better. It was just much more customer centric um, and just provided a much greater experience. You know, so Teslas are just better cars for most people to drive rather than cheaper. You know, Ubers are not necessarily cheaper than yellow cabs in most of the cities they operate. They're just a much more modern customer centric version of the same. Um, so while I think there's a lot of his theory that still is interesting, I just think it's quite misleading to companies to think that they have to be looking at companies that are cheaper. They probably need to be looking at companies that are better. Um, I was working at Nokia when the time that the iPhone came out, and it's certainly not the case that Nokia were, you know, this lazy legacy business that wasn't changing. It's just they were looking in the wrong direction for change. In general, you are challenging us and our thinking uh, about how we approach innovation and, and digital transformation. So in doing that, what do you hope the outcome will be by challenging us? I hope to um, just try and get the industry to get the right level of impetus to change. I think broadly speaking, there are a few companies that are trying to change too much too quickly and perhaps unnecessarily. Um, there's this sort of paranoia that they need to jump on the next innovation because it's going to change everything. So whether it's blockchain, whether it's voice, whether it's um, the Internet of Things. But, but most companies are not changing enough. They're not taking change um, as deeply into the company as they need to and they kind of have their head in the sand. So I'm hoping to sort of ask politely um, quite annoying and frustrating questions um, with the intention of getting companies to sort of open up to the level of change they need to embrace. You know, Tom, I'm excited about your book and I love the way that you think and approach things. You really get us to think twice about the things that we're talking about today. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to get a copy of your book. How can they go about doing that? The best way is probably on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn because it gives you a chance to listen to everyone as well as speak to people. So my username is Tom F. Goodwin on LinkedIn. All right. Well, thanks again so much. And if you want to connect with me, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe find me on Twitter at, at Tanya Hall Radio, or join my website by going to tanyahall.net.